Hello everyone and thank you for joining me. Today I am looking at the uh, Hong Dian D1 Piston Filler Fountain Pen. I had this fountain pen sitting on my desk for a couple of weeks now, but did not have a chance to fill it up yet since uh, I wanted to finish the ink in the other fountain pens that I have been using it uh, now. The more I looked at it though, the more it grew on me. Not that I did not like that when uh, I uh, got it the first time. The main uh, layer of the fountain pen is covered in a pleasant skeleton pattern made out of metal. I would assume that it is aluminium based on the weight of the fountain pen. And uh, underneath we have a transparent injection molded acrylic layer that allows to see through the entire pen. I don't know if there are any other color variants of this pen. This is the only one that I was able to see everywhere I looked. If not, I hope that in time they will introduce more colors because I do like this pen and would love it in other colors other than chrome. Personally, I'm not a big fan of chrome or chrome-like fountain pens. The cap twists on the pen nice and smooth and without any hiccups. Uh, the clip works very well and it is usable, seems to be hinge type with a spring, a little bit hard to put your fingers underneath it to lift it, uh, but I could make it work, just not in a rush. The section on the front of the pen blends in with the threads and the body of the pen nice, and um, I do find it a little bit slippery for my hands. But because of the pattern of the body and the fact that the section flares out towards the nib, I don't find that my fingers are sliding all over it, so I can make it work. My uh, thumb is resting a little bit on the pattern of the body and that helps with the grip. In smaller hands, the section uh, might be problematic, I'm not sure. I think it's one of the situations that you have to try and see how it is. It's definitely not the worst section out there, I can make it work. On the upside, this model comes with a new design uh, feed and uh, nibs, which I am a big fan of, love them. And this extra fine nib seems to be a little bit of a gem. I've been playing with it a little bit without ink and I like the feeling of it. The pen does post and it posts past the piston knob, so uh, it is fairly deep. A little bit top heavy when it's posted, but something that personally I think I can handle it, especially when drawing. Again, for smaller hands, this might be a little bit, a little bit top heavy and you probably want to use it unposted. Now, on my pen, the piston mechanism was a little bit rough and wasn't functioning too well. I had to take it apart and uh, lubricate the inside of it to make it uh, work smooth and properly. Having their tool is definitely a plus, so make sure you ask for it if you do not have it. It might be needed for this specific model if you will have the same dry and hard to function piston. I think that uh, Hong Dian changed the design of their pistons and I'm not that much of a fan of them. I much like the older design that they had. First of all, there is a lot of play between when you can start twisting the knob and when it actually engages, just above half a turn as far as I can tell. Also, I can't modify it to increase the ink capacity like I was doing on the old, older models. There is a huge gap between the top of the plunger and the top of the inside of the barrel. No matter what I did, I could not reduce the, the gap at all. And that makes it for a smaller ink capacity than the older mechanisms that they had. For today's ink, I decided to do something a little bit more well, risky in my eyes. Risky because I am not sure how it's going to work out, but I wanted to try it. Well, I wasn't sure how it's going to work out at that time of recording. So I am using the Banmi Permanent Red Ink. Uh, I use this ink here and there for small stuff, but never for a full drawing, so I was a little bit worried on how it will uh, turn out. I do like uh, the, the bright red and uh, the fiery red, I guess you can call it, uh, that it has. It's just I wasn't sure how it's gonna work out. When I open the cap, it has a very nice shade inside of the cap because of how the ink dried out. So I was kind of hoping to get the same effect. Unfortunately, on the paper that I have, didn't really turn out the same. 
And the other thing was that I thought that this red will actually look really nice and bright inside this pen since it's uh, pretty much transparent. And um, from that point of view, I think I wasn't wrong at all. Definitely an eye catcher with that ink inside of it. No issues during the writing sample. The flow was actually excellent and maybe on the wet side of things. Uh, very curious and pleasant coming from an uh, extra fine uh, nib. At least with this thing that I'm using. The other surprise is that there seems to be a little bit of flex to this nib. I would call it a semi-flex. The Tynes uh, likes to spread uh, quite easily without much of an effort, so be careful to not overdo it. You could easily bend them if you press too hard. A fun nib that is for sure and uh, I think it's up there with uh, one of my favorite ones. For the drawing today I decided to go with a dandelion, not really inspired by any of my pictures but kind of triggered by one of them. Not sure if uh, the red color fits it uh, that well so I kind of went uh, in with a little bit of uncertainty on how the result is going to be. This was also a sort of a test on one of the drawings that I'm planning for uh, the future regarding one of my uh, pictures and uh, the, the dandelion. I'll uh, show them off whenever I decide to try the, the, the actual uh, uh, drawing. One thing that was really odd for me and it still is, is to use the actual red color uh, or red ink. Not sure if I mentioned this before, but uh, as a kid, as I grew back home in Romania, at school we were using fountain pens and uh, the only color that we were allowed to use was uh, a blue ink, nothing else. I remember carrying uh, an ink bottle with me and I remember the happy accidents that unfortunately sometimes were happening with, uh, uh, with the bottle inks. Um, I can't remember exactly what kind of brand it was. I want to say Parker ink. I remember something called Pescarouche, which uh, in English would translate uh, like a version, a diminutive uh, version of Seagull. And the other ink that I remember, it was called Super, which, well, it translates the same in English, Super. And uh, again, I, I somehow remember some bottles that were shaped like the Parker bottles, and that's why somewhere in the back of my head, it's Parker Quick Ink, but I could not remember properly. Anyway, going back to the red ink, red uh, was only used by teachers. And uh, boy oh boy were you in trouble if you ever used red ink, you know, because they were using the red ink to correct your homework or uh, tests and so on. And the shame you were in uh, about to receive uh, if, well, you did uh, use red ink. Well, what can I say? Different times, different people. I, do I, I never got in trouble for that. But unfortunately, I do remember a few kids uh, and uh, I felt bad for them. <laughs> but hey, uh, like I said, different times, different people. Anyway, off the memory lane and back to the present. Uh, like I was saying, I started with the idea to draw some sort of a dandelion. It turned out a little bit uh, rubbish. Um, kind of went out of paper at a moment. So I uh, sort of uh, tried to... Um, change the composition and then try to go out of page pretty much everywhere else to sort of try and make it balance like uh, you know and pretend like I actually plan to do that um, I really need to start using larger paper sizes can't wait for next year to come like I was mentioning in my previous um, videos I'm almost out of uh, this paper size I will probably be even more scared. Uh, usually white paper is uh, intimidating for me. And, uh, am I the only one? What do you think? Anyway, then I also realized that this thing doesn't really shade too much. Or at least I was not able to get the shades that I was seeing inside the cap of the bottle. And I also was not able to make it too dark in some parts where I would have wanted it to. So I kind of made, well, a little bit of a mess to be honest. Not too bad, I guess, but could have been better. I love the color, I really do, but I think from now on I will be keeping it for adding accents to my drawings rather than make a full one with it. Anyway, once I uh, finished it, I decided to make another scribble, kind of a sketch, but without any planning, you know, so I did. Nothing too special again, I guess, but fun and relaxing, at least I got that out of it. 
I was basically just doing a lot of hashing um, and uh, here and there blocked the page with some solid uh, red trying to get some interesting shapes out of it. Not sure what uh, it what it is and what I end up with but all I can say was fun and I really really enjoyed uh, making it. And I really really enjoyed that nib. I liked it a lot. Um, to be honest with you I was just more into the moment and enjoying how that knee feels on the paper than actually focusing on how uh, how the drawing looks like. I don't know if that says anything but I can say that I like the nib. So speaking of the fountain pen, I do like it uh, but when drawing with it I find it a little bit un uncomfortable in the way I was specifically holding it trying it to hold it um, up the body because of uh, the skeleton design um, well it starts to hurt your fingers a little bit because of the indentations uh, in it but uh, again only if you hold it like I did when I was drawing writing was a comfortable experience for me didn't have any issues with it Overall, in the end, I have to admit, I really like this fountain pen. It does have one or two downsides that I mentioned, uh, but personally, I have no issues recommending it. Anyway, I guess this, uh, this is it for my ramblings uh, for today again. And um, I will be seeing you next week, hopefully, when uh, I will actually do a couple of more sketches. Uh, I think I'm planning to do maybe like eight or, or ten of them. They are going to be quite simple and fairly quick sketches that's why i'll probably do a bunch of them because of the fountain pen that i'll, that I'll be using um, um well hopefully they will turn out a little bit better than more interesting than um, the ones from today as usual enjoy the rest of the time lapse in pa uh, in peace and quiet and feel free to leave your comments below if you have any i will reply to them as soon as i get the chance Thank you for joining me today, hope I'll see you next time, and I wish you all the best and a wonderful day or night, wherever you are. Take care. Bye.